27 and here we will further discuss about joint pdf in last lecture we had already seen how to compute joint pdf now we will discuss about further example on joint pdf and after that we will talk about independency or dependency if you are discussing about independency what does it mean at the same moment also you talk about dependency as well so in the last lecture we had already seen that how to compute joint pdf of two random variables if two random variables happen together uh, in a in an experiment then we know that it is all about how to compute joint pdf so easily we can compute it depends upon what which object random variable we observe first so suppose we are observing x first then we compute it uh, like this way that means if you are observing x first that means we somehow we can compute uh, probability density function of x afterward we are observing y that means uh, we are having partial information about x so that's why after that we are observing y what does it mean it simply say that we are observing y conditionally that means conditional expectation of y given x we are observing so uh, if you multiply through multiplication rule uh, then we, we are getting joint distribution of x and y together so this we had already seen in last class we will see uh, some example based on this okay so coming to outline of today's lecture first again i would like to say that uh, we will talk about computational of uh, computation of joint pdf and again if you are having joint pdf further we how, how we can uh, uh, compute back our uh, marginal pdf and conditional pdf those things again we have to look into that and uh, also we will talk about beige rule as well beige rule that one is coming everywhere whether it is uh, you are talking about two events whether you are talking about two distribution uh, discrete distribution or whether you are talk, talking about two continuous distribution and there is no any issue everywhere uh, beige theorem is coming why because it is talking about uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, um, conditional distribution so that's why it is a rephrasing of conditional distribution what we and multiplication rule what we are calling it okay through that uh, we see uh, beige rule so that's why here that uh, also will come okay afterward we will discuss about independency of uh, uh, any two re continuous random variable or even more than two continuous random variable so this notion of independency and dependency is very much essential in order to compute joint pdf because in markov process every time whatever uh, or in random process every time you have to compute joint distribution every time you have to compute joint distribution so how much uh, compatible you are in pro in the process of computing joint distribution it depends upon so joint distribution of n random variable that time you have to compute it okay so because random process happens to be sequence of random variables so uh, you are here uh, uh, till now in math one you had already seen that uh, sequence of real number here it would be after that you will uh, you can extend that to sequence of functions so those, those those happens to be deterministic sequence now here situation would be that you will deal with sequence of random variables that defines a random process so if you, you are having such kind of situation then how we uh, tackle a random process by uh, come up, coming up with the joint distribution of n member of the random variable a random process n member so, uh, take uh, n uh, random variable in together from any random uh, process and just try to come up with an one explicit form of uh, joint distribution okay then you will able to understand that random process in a better way so that way it is very much essential to understand all these dependency independency and competition of joint distribution so here i will take a very simple kind of example so example is coming like this way so here uh, here in this process uh, what uh, uh, we will have a random variable okay uh, continuous random variable and uh, for that continuous random variable we will compute pdf cdf expectation and various everything in conditional framework first okay so suppose x is a uh, what it is a continuous random variable which is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda equal to one lambda equal to one it is given here okay then our question is coming here first we have to find what is the conditional pdf conditional we are not pdf it is already given okay we have to find conditional pdf then we have to find uh, cdf conditional cdf as well once we are having conditional pdf then we have to find conditional cdf given observation or event a so call this event a is that we, x is observing value uh, one onward afterward after one one onward so a is defined as that x is taking observing value greater than one this is the given event so you have to find uh, conditional density of x given 
okay so this you have to find it okay and apart from that you have to find conditional expectation as well so this one is the conditional expectation that means expectation of x given a then you have to find conditional variance that means you know, variance of x given a so all these you have to find just given information is that this one is the input and this this would be output that this you have to find so what is the best thing that first you in order to compute all these uh, first you find uh, conditional pdf what is the conditional pdf of x given a so conditional pdf easily we had already seen that if you are uh, taking x from the event a itself then it will be what it would be just ratio of the marginal pdf of x divided by probability of observing a so we can easily find probability of observing a it is talking about that a is what x is <laughs> observing value greater than a so easily we can find it by integrating the corresponding density function what is the density function of this exponential function it is e to the power minus lambda time x lambda into the power minus lambda time x and you multiply it with u function unit or step function so that uh, when x is negative it would be zero and when x is greater than equal to zero this would be lambda into e to the power lambda uh, minus lambda time x so just integrate it from one to infinity onward so integrate it lambda into e to the power minus lambda time x with respect to x and in last lecture i had already given one explicit example of such kind of this kind of event that this this one is one what kind of tail probability and easily you can compute it it is just e to the power minus lambda e to the power minus lambda x equal to 1 so e to the power minus lambda here here this value so easily you can so here uh, what you do so uh, f of x is what it is uh, lambda into e to the power minus lambda okay uh here lambda to e to the power minus lambda and uh, p of a is what e to the power minus lambda so here just simplify lambda times this will come here e to the power minus x plus lambda simple simplification is coming here okay and uh, in that process if you are okay uh, you can find the integral there is no any issue you can find this integral then you will get the value of this one lambda by epsilon something lambda lambda of okay so what you do further simplify so you are having conditional pdf this this is the conditional pdf what you got it okay uh, now you try to find conditional cdf so what is the from the definition of uh, uh, conditional cdf what would be lambda equal to 1 is given so that's where 1 1 will cancel out lambda equal to 1 it is not uh, material to write uh, lambda uh, 1 here lambda equal to 1 is already given so that's why it is uh, uh, taking uh, here you can write it it is the power minus uh, 1 and that means it is 1 by e so that's why we are getting this property of a property of event is 1 by e easily we got it okay and likewise also uh, here lambda equal to 1 so don't need to write it in lambda again here so uh, all we are writing in explicit form so this is this is your conditional density now we are looking for conditional uh, cdf cumulative distribution function so from the definition of uh, cdf it can be defined like this way so what what does it talk about it is just talking about uh, probability conditional probability so here we will talk about it is the ratio of joint probability that x is observing up to x and a divided by probability of a just simplify all these what is x x is talking about uh, less than this arbitrary x and a is talking about uh, the random variable is greater than one so if you are willing to write this one jointly uh, what is the meaning of that it joint meaning of that x is between a small x and one this one joint jointly if you are writing joint occurrence of this one is like this way that's why we have written that probability that in the numerator probability would that uh, x is observing will be between 1 to x that happens to be joint uh, activities of these two uh, event divided by the probability of a and if you simplify it then easily you will get directly if you are able to write but what you do you are already having 
explicit form of conditional density so just integrate the conditional density uh, from uh, 1 to x 1 to x okay and what is this e is coming uh, what this one is property of a a property of a is 1 by e so e will go up in the numerator and just simplify this one after simplification you are getting explicit representation of the uh, conditional cdf of this random variable conditional random variable x given a you got the conditional cdf and also you got the conditional pdf so uh, here you can see that all these this conditional cdf independently you can compute yourself don't need to compute conditional pdf first but here question is that you have to compute both conditional pdf and conditional cdf that's why we are computing all these so first one is we have already computed conditional CDF, pdf then we are computing conditional cdf now we are going looking for our desired outcome what what are those that means this one uh, we have to compute conditional expectation of x given a and conditional variance of uh, x given a these two we have to compute so in in the process of computing the conditional expectation of x given a so we have what does it we are writing like this way so we have to proceed with uh, the weight would be provided by conditional corresponding conditional pdf so that's where conditional pdf is coming and we know that uh, the x is observing value uh, one onward due to this conditioning approach okay uh, this uh, this due to a okay so that's where we are in integrating this conditional pdf uh, one onward and uh, in multiplication with x and simplify then you are getting the conditional expectation of x given a it is equal to 2 and likewise you can compute conditional variance as well so uh, prior to compute conditional variance what you have to do you have to compute uh, second order conditional moment so that's where it is then it would help to find very conditional variance so first we it is very easy to compute second order conditional moment so that one is equal to pi through this uh, in the same explanation what i discuss about uh, regarding computation of conditional expectation okay so uh, it is phi afterward what you will do just apply the concept of variance how it can be decomposed into um, expectation of second moment second conditional moment minus uh, a square of expectation of first conditional moment it is just uh, it, it is borrowed from uh, that uh, explicit representation of variance and just uh, you are having value of this one you are having value of this one so simplify it variance is, conditional variance is equal to one so you can compute all those things just with this set of information you computed how many things four things you have computed so this one is one is conditional expectation second one is conditional uh, one is conditional uh, pdf third one is uh, second one is conditional cdf third one is conditional expectation and fourth one is conditional variance so everything you have computed from the same single information this one that x is exponentially distributed with parameter one now we'll talk about another i will try, try to come to discuss one problem that means uh, uh, suppose joint distribution is given to us even it would be not given then we have to um, find an explicit form um, based on the problem uh, some some kind of uh, we have to apply the properties of being a joint distribution and from that uh, uh, we will compute joint distribution marginal distribution and conditional distribution so problem is coming like this way so john uh, throws a dart at a circular target of radius uh, r okay there is a circular target so easily you can say that uh, it would be a sample space uh, if you are trying to hit the target then it is a continuous john continuous john simply we can say that so we assume that he always uh, hits the target and um, and that all points of impacts are equally likely the equally likely uniform probability law is coming here equally likely that that means there is a constant constant density simply then what is situation then we have to find the joint pdf we have to find the marginal pdf uh, and conditional also if uh, it requires so since uh, joint uh, random variable x and y is uniformly distributed in the circular region because of equally likely situation so throughout the region the density would be constant it is a constant high so that what is that constant height how easily we can get constant height so simply uh, what is the probability Pro probability it is talking about uh, probability of this sample space if you talk about it would be equal to one uh, so from there you can say that uh, uh, what does it uh, probability how it is related with density density is always talking about uh, even if you talk about a very small length so it would be uh, talk about uh, probability per unit area due to that easily you come up with uh, the density relation it is what ratio of probability divided by 
area so what is the uh, probability of this uh, 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 that uh, john will hit in this circular target that probability would be one with probability one it would have and what is the area area is pi r square so that's why uh, the density joint density rule is very simple to compute that that would be one by pi r square otherwise you can say that if you don't want to use that logic so you you can use this logic through that you will say that uh, what is the density when x y uh, falls uh, the point x y falls in the target density is, uh, it is constant because due to uniform law when x y belongs to the circular target uh, that means uh, uh, simply uh, you can say that uh, that means x square plus y square is less than equal to r then uh, density is constant because of uniform law and if a point is outside uh, this circle then it a circular uh, target then density is zero we are not bothering about outside the circular region okay we are not bothering about uh, outside the circular target so the through that uh, apply the concept of uh, properties of uh, joint distribution that means if you integrate the uh, joint distribution over minus infinity to infinity so it is a function of two variables so you have to proceed with double integration so if you integrate the joint distribution with respect to x and y so you are integrating density function with respect to x and y because your two random variables are coming together or jointly you see that the integration would be equal to one that that one is coming from normalizing condition but what we know we here we know that x is observing value between x here this within this circular target so this integral it will be it will be confined to uh, x square plus y square less than equal to r square and f of uh, x y it is what uh, uniform so that's why it is constant so, so that constant we are calling c it will come out so that means just we need to integrate uh, dx dy then what does it uh, what does it talk about it is just talk, talking about area of the circular region and from the principle of uh, what uh, uh, from the geometry what we know radius is already equal to r and uh, then easily we can say that what is the area of this uh, circular region it is pi r square c times pi r square equal to 1 from here you can conclude that c is equal to 1 by pi r square okay and hence we can say that density is uniform that one is 1 by pi r square here r is fixed so that's why it is a constant number always it is a constant number what we so the density is constant throughout this circular target okay so th that is the process to compute uh, joint pdf here due to uniform law it is very much easy to compute but if uh, things are not uniform then it would become uh, uh, difficult okay now let us we compute marginal pdf that means suppose first we are willing to compute uh, pdf of y then what we do we do marginalization with respect to x that means we try to exhaust x Th that means we integrate the joint density function with respect to x then x would be exhausted so here uh, we uh, we are taking integration from minus infinity to infinity but what is happening that we are taking integration from uh, what minus so here just we have to con in the direction of x so this one is x direction this one is y direction so if you talk about uh, the limit of uh, x we are integrating element is uh, we are taking integration with respect to x so what is the entering point here anyone would like to highlight so what is the entering point what is the lower limit of x because you are just integrating with respect to x what is the lower limit anyone no 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 here this, is it zero here uh, if you integrating with respect yeah so see the entering point okay so here uh, you can say that i have written it x square plus y square less than equal to r square but you have to be more explicit so here simply you can just uh, uh, remove it and write it lower limit would be what uh, minus a square root of r square minus what would be here y square and outer limit would be upper limit would be r square positive uh, square root of positive square root of r square minus y square this one is the upper limit so through this integrating element you can easily see that uh, dx is uh, varying along we are taking along horizontal axis this one is axis 
this one, vertical one is y axis so we can easily compute so the pdf of y it is just uh, after simplification you can simplify it uh, already so it is equal to y so here pdf is uh, here it, Uh, it is definition of uh, what we call it uh, that pdf we do marginalization of x we don't know uh, uh, that's why i told that density function is always uh, defined from uh, uh, this one it is a uh, function of two variables it would define from r2 to r but we know that uh, this one is taking non-zero value in the in range of sample space range of sample space here it is non-zero so here outside this one this density is zero so that's where we are including did you get so always you need to in, uh, mention this one but after that you have to look for where this one is non-zero so we have to integrate only for non-zero below density we don't have to bother about zero part okay so that's where uh, this one is our starting always you need to mention it after that you have to just limit yourself here by geometry that means geometry must be clear to you geometry of the domain must be clear to you so you come up with this uh, density of y likewise also you can compute density of x so in the process of computing density of f your integrating element is along the vertical axis so what is that dy is entering y is entering at here what is name of this one that one is entering point is that will lower limit would be uh, negative of a square root of r square minus x square and upper limit would be uh, positive of uh, positive square root of uh, r square minus x square so after simplification you will see that the density of x you will get this is the density of x okay you got uh, marginal these are marginal density uh, you got it through marginalization of the joint density now let us compute uh, conditional density so these are the conditional density if you try to see uh, it is uniformly distributed so conditional density uh, i will discuss how to compute this conditional density but here uh, one thing you can say that uh, the process uh, through which we have defined conditional density you can compute it directly so here x for given given y so for given y if you try to see given y so you can uh, it would be what just it would be a line for given y you just use variability of x so if you given y you observe variability of x so along this y is fixed along this simply you can say that, say that y is fixed for given y uh, you see variability of x so here due to that what is happening that uh, you see some what uh, it is having same nature what the joint density is having we had already seen that uh, uh, during the process of defining uh, conditional density how we had defined it so in last lecture we had defined conditional density of x given y of x given y it was defined as ratio of joint density of x y divided by a density of marginal density of y because you are introducing, introducing conditioning over y that's where you are dividing so using this concept usually you can find density would be 1 by a square root of uh, twice of a square root of r square minus y square easily you can compute and this one is uniformly distributed because here we talk about variability of here y given y y is fixed so once y is fixed so at a time here for each y y is fixed okay so this uh, conditional density would be just function of x and we don't observe in the explicit form there is no x so simply we can say that it is uh, constant that means uniformly distributed uh, uniformly distributed between where to where uniformly distributed between these two points likewise conditional density of y given x is uniformly distributed between these two points so here conditional density is uniformly distributed why because our joint density is uniformly distributed and this one is at a time it is what it is a fixed number fixed number so always the geometry of conditional density is always inspired from the geometry of joint density so here joint density is constant uh, uniform so that's where uniform conditional density would be also uniform so due to that it is happening okay we try to go to discuss uh, other problem so suppose we are having two random variable x and y both are jointly continuous uh, random variable that means uh, they are having joint continuous uh, distribution or joint density 
So that joint density is given like this way. This is the joint density. And here C is, it is definitely, it is not uniformly distributed. Here it is, when uh, we, where we are talking about, we are talking about, so anyone would like to highlight what kind of region this one? In this region, uh, this uh, X and Y, it is non-uniformly distributed. Okay, it is non-uniformly distributed. Anyone would like to highlight what is the region? What kind of shape it would have, this region? Always plot the region whatever uh, where density is non zero so this is the uh, region so here it is talking about y is less than or equal to 1 and x is taking value up to 1 so fix plus x is taking value up to 1 and y is less than or equal to 1 so that means uh, this uh, axis is talking about y equal to x and behind this x uh, behind if you see in this region in this region what we you will observe y would be less than or equal to x so you can talk about here this is the region where uh, you observe density is non uniform it is def defined density uh, the density uh, xy distributed in non uniform fashion uh, like this way so first job is that we have to find what is c and after that we have to find uh, first we have to find what is c because we need, need to know this this c we we are calling it normalizing constant then we have to find this probability then we have to find this probability uh, this conditional probability all these we have to find it so if you try to look into uh, here uh, this one is talking about uh, x is this first focus on this this one is talking about y less than equal to uh, x2 that means uh, if, if this line is y equal to x then this line would be you can say that y equal to x by 2 then there would be third line it would be y equal to x by 4 so all this situation okay all this situation are given to us given to us okay now we try to compute all these things so first we can compute uh, uh, c by using normalizing condition and then we will compute all these so situation graphically you can observe that same thing i had already taken drawn of this this is the this this, this is the uh, range of the sample space jointly continuous sample space range of the okay range you can say that it is in, in triangular shape and uh, a you can call this event is a, a is defined that it is behind uh, x by 2 y is less than or equal to x by 2 so a already given and apart from that this one is what you can easily i have already plotted here also you can plot it like this way okay. it's not a right plot so remember that it is here distribution is not uniformly distributed one thing remember that so let us first compute c so how we can compute c that means if you are integrating the density function over the uh, omega x omega x this is the omega x so outside omega x uh, density is zero so we don't have to bother about so what is uh, if you see variability of first uh, so see the direction of uh, integration so your direction of integration first you are integrating with respect to y then after that you are integrating with respect to x so while integrating with respect to y you have to see the limit of y so here uh, that means integrating with respect to y that's, that means you are talking about this vertical movement so here in this vertical movement uh, here at when this uh, arrow vertical arrow enters to this region then that term uh, y equal to zero and where when it mm, it is coming out from the region when y equal to x so that's where limit of uh, y is it varies from y equal to 0 to y equal to x so that's where you integrate it after that uh, you have to see variability of x so x will vary from 0 to 1 okay so so second limit we have taken it from 0 to 1 this is for uh, x okay so if you just c will come out and after integration you will come to see that c is equal to uh, what uh, 10 you got it value of c is equal to 10 and remember that if i am asking what is the area of this uh, omega x what is the area if i talk about under this density function density it is not uniformly distributed so it looks like uniform uh, it is a triangle so simply don't calculate area here by uh, using property of 
triangle it generally how you find the area of a triangle we say that it is 1 by 2 uh, height into base don't apply it we apply this formula only in case of uniform distribution this one is only if the uh, here points are uniformly distributed then we will apply this formula area area of formula but it is not if it is it is not such a situation then we can't apply this one okay we can't apply this one so if someone is thinking that we can find c by uh, equating this uh, uh, okay integral of this integral equal to what we say that uh, equal to the area of this one uh, that will give value of c it is not like that scenario why because the density is not uniformly distributed so you have to properly find this integration then you will be able to find let us we compute other probabilities so we are willing to compute probability of a that means this region this region we have to compute so what again you see here uh, you are free to integrate uh, with respect to uh, x first or with respect to y first so it depends upon your approach which so i find here uh, dealing with y is easier first why, why because y is having uh, exponent one it is linear function so that's why in integrating linear function is much easier than uh, quite uh, quadratic function little bit uh, uh, comparison is there so just uh, if you are willing to integrate with respect to y first for this uh, probability of a so what you have to do again see variability of y along the vertical axis so here again you can see that y enter at y equal to 0 and uh, it get out from um, this region when y equal to x by 2 that's where limit of integration is 0 to x by 2 and uh, and hence uh, after uh, uh, integrating with respect to y what would be limit of x then limit of x would be 0 to 1 so simplify all these and you from here you got property of a is c by 40 but you got the value of c that one is 10 so substitute it so it would be probably 1 by 4 so from the geometry it looks like that this one is the 50 percent of this whole region but uh, so area would be 1 by 2 but it is not like uh, that situation why because of non-uniform distribution of the points okay so that's where the area of uh, age and the probability of age 1 by 4 likewise you can compute uh, probability of b what is b this event we are calling it b this event we are calling it b that means we are willing to find area of this one probability of this one so uh, in order to compute probability in the similar framework we can find probability of uh, this uh, uh, probability of b it would be 1 by 16 now we come to find our desired probability that means probability of b given a probability of a we are having probability of b we are having so probability of b given a what would be so it would be just joint occurrence of uh, uh, probability of if you talk about uh, uh, a intersection b Anyone would like to highlight what would be A intersection B? What would be A intersection B? Anyone? Are you listening to me or not? A is the this region. A is, A is this region. And B is this region. Okay. A is, it would be what? Yeah, it would be just B. A intersection B would be just B. You see, this is the common, it is this one is B. B is inside A. So that's why A intersection B would be B itself. Did you get? Did you get meaning of that or not? Okay, fine. So if you are willing to find conditional property of B given A, so from the definition of conditional property, what does uh, property of B given A? It is joint property of uh, that means joint property that means property of A intersection B divided by probability of a okay and uh, we know that a intersection b equal to b so this ratio would be just ratio of probability of b and probability of a okay so just find it find it ratio a final result is uh, final desired conditional probability is 1 by 4 so in that in that process you can compute all the probability so geometrically you have to visualize everything whatever possible visualization is there try to visualize and compute the probability so uh, now i will talk about Bayes rule for probability density function afterward we will talk about independency or dependency so what is Bayes rule so again in the similar framework what we had defined Bayes rule for Probability density function, uh, probability mass function, we will define here Bayes rule for probability density function. So, the definition of conditional probability density function that would lead to computation of posterior probability distribution. Here, all about in Bayes rule, we try to compute posterior distribution of 
or posterior poverty density function. Uh, whatever distribution is there. So we had already seen that uh, in the conditional definition of conditional uh, distribution uh, that joint property density can be written uh, in uh, in these two approach either if you are observing y first then you can write it like this way if you are observing x first then you can write joint density through multiplication like this way so it is all the statement of uh, what we call it conditional density okay so if you simplify from here just uh, if you are willing to compute uh, this one uh, if you just confine to these two representation confined to these two representation of joint density then from here you can say that uh, suppose x uh, this one simply it is it would be a prior distribution of x or prior density of x so if you want to uh, have a likelihood situation that means uh, given x you are trying to observe y then what is happening that we simply say that it is a likelihood function so th this is likelihood function this one is the prior distribution and uh, due to that uh, we see the there is an update in the distribution of x so that updated distribution we are calling it posterior distribution so once initially you are having some prior bleep after that what you say that you got something else to observe okay after x something else to observe in order to uh, that means some, you you got some evidence Evidence. So definitely, due to, due to based on that evidence, the distribution of x it would either improve or uh, if evidence is right evidence, then the, the distribution of x would improve. If the evidence is wrong evidence, then distribution will uh, it will uh, not good. It will decrease like decrease down. So that situation will come. So this one simply we say that it is the uh, uh, what we call it updated distribution of x once you are observing y. Okay. So updated distribution of this generally we are calling it evidence. Okay, so we need to collect the evidence in a proper way. So what we collect, we are collecting through uh, total property law or uh, total uh, total property law. It will be converted into total density law as well uh, from the same framework. So uh, we need to understand all these concepts here. So this all these what we call it uh, Bayes rule, where uh, Bayes rule talk about the computation of prior posterior distribution based on prior distribution and likelihood approach and evidence. So this one is the prior distribution this one is the likelihood this one is the evidence so three concepts are coming in together in order to compute posterior distribution so here i have already mentioned that suppose y uh, for simplicity we have taken that y is observing value between a to b so it may observe outside a to b there is no any so it may be any other kind of it may not be an interval it may be something else as well so for simplicity we had taken this situation so here we can say that uh, uh, the density of x uh, uh, marginal density of x as a prior density of uh, random variable x then we say that uh, this one is the what we call it it is the likelihood function of x so given x uh, for given x what is the probability of observing y what is the density uh, uh, probability per unit area or likelihood function simply we say that it is simply we call, say that it is likelihood function or simply also uh, we can say that it is data generated process or likelihood of y condition on x okay so generally it is related to probability it is not related to completely uh, what we uh, distribution if it is just a function of x so if you keep on changing x so you will get different different uh, situation okay of uh, different, different different likelihood of y now here third one is evidence generally we calling it so we can compute this one with the help of this total probability law that probability of observing y y over this event a okay a may be of any any nature it depends upon the problem what is that so this one is all about Bayes rule so you might have already seen that uh, it is having the same framework what we had already seen uh, in the discrete situation also uh, what uh, in during uh, elementary probability what we had seen so similar situation it is having so i think probably uh, do we have time we don't have much time so a little bit i will talk about independency then uh, i will find out this so what is independency so again i told that if occurrence, occurrence of one is not affecting the occurrence of others and vice versa then simply say that those two are independent simply uh, those two are totally working in, in, in independent situation there is no dependency between these two so that situation is coming so uh, how we can define uh, two independent random variable so suppose we are having two random variable x and y then it would be independent if uh, if you, if you are defining conditional uh, density of x given y it is just equal to uh, density of x marginal density of x then we say that uh, by introducing conditioning over 
y it is not affecting the density of x the, that probability pattern of x so that's why uh, y is not affecting x what does it mean simply we say that x is independent of y likewise if this situation is coming then uh, from the uh, representation of uh, multiplication rule we can say that if you are able to write uh, joint density as a product of uh, individual marginal density of x and y then again we can say that uh, both happens to be joint uh, independent independent one more criteria of uh, observing independent so this result is directly applying that if you are observing the joint cdf it happens to a product of individual cdf then we again you can say that those two would be independent to each other likewise also if x and y happens to be independent then if you are willing to find the expectation of product of x y it would be just equal to uh, product of corresponding expectation so all these are different different notion of independence so all are talking talking about same independency of x y but uh, in different different approach as much information you are having what information based on that you can uh, elaborate the independence nature okay so consider here two events so usually we have to look for uh, dependency or independency of x and y okay so here we are having joint distribution and uh, this one and this one so we have to talk uh, from the perspective of uh, these uh, any of these two concept whether these uh, two random variable x and y would be independent or not so if you try to see first it is very easy to uh, see uh, first density easily we can bifurcate into as a product of two density density of x into density of y Easily we are able to write in that framework. Okay, so unit as step function have taken that we know that this the joint density is defined only for in first quadrant. Due to that, uh, it will be converted into this one is for only positive x and this one is for positive y. Okay, positive uh, po positive jo joint occurrence of positive x and positive y. Okay, so we are able to bifurcate this density into two form like product of these two. So what is happening that so we say that uh, you can call this density f of x density of x and this one is density of y so that means uh, joint density is written as a product of the individual marginal density so we can easily claim that x and y happens to be what independent to each other and there is no very easy competition we see it here uh, in order to visualize independency between x and y in the first case but in the second case things are not easy so what what we have to do here in second case density is eight times x y in the uh, again you can see that it is uh, triangle upper triangle you can visualize this region what would be this region it this region would be like this way that means x is less than y it is talking about this region y is very up to one so in this region we have to individually find mar marginal density this one is equal to this and uh, find the conditional density uh, otherwise find marginal density both marginal density uh, marginal density of x marginal density of y and multiply these two and we observe that here joint density is not equal to product of the corresponding marginal density what does it say it simply say that x and y are not uh, independent those are dependent why because uh, this uh, this two, uh, product of individual marginal density is not equal to joint density that means it is not satisfying the criteria of being independent random variable so that's way in the second case if a, a random variable x and y is having joint density like this way then that would be not independent those would be dependent so that situation is coming so other thing we will discuss in next class if anyone is willing to ask